what's good you guys in today's video we are going to be showcasing the fifth iteration of the mouse controller i can't believe we have been working on this project for almost a year this project has been truly an awesome experience taking just a simple idea all the way into reality and with each iteration we continue to see massive improvements that slowly but steadily bring this idea slash concept into an actual viable game changer. One of the major problems we had with the mouse controller project was making a thumb be as accurate as possible. A major factor that got in the way of this was the friction that was created when your thumb came in contact with the thumb mouse pad. This part was quite complicated as we needed to remove just the right amount of friction. If no friction exists, it will be almost impossible to move your thumb precisely to an in-game target and you will more than likely overshoot that in-game target. If too much friction exists, when sliding your thumb across the surface, in-game actions will stutter and be slow. This friction issue has been either too much or too little with every mouse controller build. With mouse controller V5, we came up with a pretty unique solution. We used ball bearings. By using bearings, it gives your thumb the physical feedback required to tell the brain where its current position is while eliminating that extra resistance that was present when two physical surfaces would glide and make contact with each other. Next, we added a grip-like texture to the bottom half of the thumb disc. The thumb disc is what we glide over the optical sensor so it can register movement the same way a trackball does. The grip texture that we used is very similar to the silicone used on analog sticks. This silicone is used on work gloves to grip tools and objects. By using the combination of slick ball bearings that can easily glide most solid objects in combination with a grippy material, the thumb disc grips onto the ball bearings while being able to freely move with very, very minimal resistance with a nice feeling feedback. This resulted in allowing us to make extremely precise in-game movements. This bearing setup proved to be a massive success. For the first time in the Mouse Controller Project series, we got an Aim Lab score that was relatively close to our score while using a regular mouse on PC. As I've stated many times in our other videos, I've been a primarily controller player for my entire life but the last year fully transitioned to keyboard and mouse. The best accuracy score I could get in Aim Labs with a controller was around 28K. On the other hand though, with just a little practice on keyboard and mouse, I was easily able to achieve a score of 50K plus. With the friction issue we just talked about that was present on all previous mouse controllers, the best Aim Lab score I was able to achieve was around 38K a 10k plus more accurate score over a standard controller which don't get me wrong i was very happy with but now with our friction issue solved i could easily get around 50k with the mouse controller this alone proves the potential of this concept and how it is vastly superior over traditional analog sticks i mean hey if you don't believe how crazy a 50k aim lab score is for controller and again i'm a noob not a pro player so keep that in mind Try this for yourself. Aim Labs is a free program on Steam. Download it and try getting even close to 50K on traditional analog sticks. At that moment, you will truly see how powerful the use of an optical sensor on a controller can be. The last major change that was made to mouse controller V5 was the inclusion of an analog stick on the back side of the controller. On the previous versions of the mouse controller, we completely removed the right analog stick as the goal was to have the added mouse functionality completely replace its use case. This time with V5, we relocated the right analog stick to the back side of the controller, which proved to be a game changer as it would be quite challenging to be accurate while using an analog stick on the back side of the controller. Instead, we used it to complete large in-game movements like complete turnarounds. As the mouse controller has a limited amount of space on the mouse pad surface, it was difficult to do large movements before you would hit the edge or it would require you to continually raise and place back down your thumb over and over again on the mouse pad, resulting in fatigue and tiredness of the thumb. By combining the back analog stick in conjunction with the front thumb mouse resulted in the ultimate control of aiming and movement. 
I found myself using the back analog stick for the majority of my general movements and then used the thumb mouse when I wanted to be very precise. This form of analog stick usage is not uncommon. Programs for this button layout have already been made as using multiple inputs for aiming slash movement is very popular in the gyro scene. A program called FlickStick allows you to instantly turn to the direction you flick the right analog stick to. FlickStick is extremely useful with our back analog stick setup, but found that the stock movement of the right analog stick worked better in our use case. Multiple sensitivities can also be applied to the right analog stick via remapping software. So when just running around in game, you can have the sensitivity at a higher setting. And then when you aim down the sights, it will drop down to a much lower sense so you can be more accurate. All in all, the back analog stick may look awkward to use, but felt extremely natural. The best way I can describe how it felt using is by comparing it to back paddles. It may be difficult at first, but can quickly be adapted to. So let's talk about mouse controller V6. <laughs> yes, V6. I still have so many ideas for this controller. I feel like more and more come to me every single night, but I think I might be reaching my skill gap. I'm not an advanced programmer or an engineer. I'm just a regular bro who has an interest in gaming and electronics, but I don't know shit about electronics and engineering. I'm just frustrated with the current state of the controller format that hasn't changed in 25 years. So if you have skills in 3D printing or 3D modeling, or if you have skills in microcontroller programming, such as Teensy and Arduino, and you think this project is cool and share a similar vision, please, please shoot me an email. I would love to work with you. Together, we could actually change the controller scene forever. And with that being said, I love you guys. Later, you